there's been this huge spotlight that's been shining on the issue of burnout and especially in the healthcare community. So I'm very grateful to have this experience this morning to speak to this topic for your organization to talk about some research-based strategies, how to prevent burnout and how to promote the converse of burnout, which is well-being. Today, here's just my, uh, my overall plan for how we're going to spend the next couple hours together. The first thing that I want to do is just cover some research findings about burnout and well-being in healthcare. And second, we're going to use some of that information that comes from the research to identify the best strategies to manage these things. The research studies around burnout have exploded in the last couple of decades, there's something like 6,000 research papers that have been done just over that time period. And several research groups are now trying to pay attention and monitor what's going on in the healthcare community on an ongoing basis. One group that's doing this is uh, a group at the Mayo Clinic that developed a um, survey instrument that you may have heard of. It's called the Wellbeing survey. And so I just wanted to share with you as some of the research background on this, um, the latest research that they collected based on last year, and it was done on about 165,000 assessments from the healthcare community. So basically, to give you the very abbreviated version of the report, over, on average, over eight out of 10 um, healthcare professionals believe that their work is very meaningful. It's not to say that we don't get frustrated and stressed out and have our bad days, but the great thing about the healthcare industry is that generally speaking, healthcare professionals enjoy a profound sense of personal uh, meaning in their work. But then the data inserts this big but. Despite believing in the value of their work, about six out of every 10 um, are also experiencing right now emotional problems and they're struggling with burnout. Another five out of 10 are seeking professional help in areas like stress management and resilience and emotional distress and even coping with suicidal thoughts. And that's about twice as many healthcare professionals as are currently seeking professional help in other areas like work-life balance, or um, it's over four times as many prof healthcare professionals that are currently seeking help in things like professional development. So burnout and stress and resilience, these are really top of the, top of the heap issues right now in the healthcare community. What I'd like to do now is show you some pathology specific data that I have access to, and you have access to it as well. It's research that's been done by Tate Shanafelt. Um, you may or may not who know who that is. He, he's actually a hematologist. He's currently the chief wellness officer at Stanford, but before that he came from Mayo. And so he has very much been involved in creating this body of research. And for the last, I want to say maybe nine or 10 years, well, actually a little bit over 10 years now, um, Tate Shanavelt and his colleagues have on an ongoing basis been trying to monitor what's been going on in the healthcare community. And so recently they reported or they did an update of their report on 7,000 7, clinicians, including about 200 pathologists. And I just wanted to show you briefly what that research study showed. So what Tate Shanafelt did with his colleagues is they created this two by two matrix. And what you see on the X axis are the percentage of those reporting burnout. And then on the Y axis, you see the percentage of people who are satisfied with their work-life balance. So overall for all of the, the physicians, what they noted was that burnout rates were somewhere between 40 to 50%. That's roughly what research is, is uh, reporting overall. So it very much corroborates what uh, other people are seeing. Burnout rates are about 10% higher in physicians than they are in the general population. And their satisfaction with, with work-life integration is about 20% lower. 